Talk You Pick special is live, giving you the option to pick the league of your choice and get 30 days of picks for only $99. 30 days of the NFL for $99, done. Just want NBA and NHL for the next month? You can do that for only $99 each. That's right, 99 gets you every release from the league of your choice from your favorite handicapper, including 5% best bets for 30 days. No coupon code is required and 30 day sports passes will go back to regular price Sunday at midnight. So lock in as many sports and handicappers for only $99 before time runs out. Hey guys, welcome in. Happy uh, Monday here on this November the 15th. Time to talk a little college basketball. College basketball tip-off show, of course, powered by wagertalk.com. Uh, not the biggest of cards here today, but certainly some intriguing matchups here early on in this college basketball season. And we welcome in three of the finest college basketball handicappers located well, this side of the Mississippi, except for I think one of them is actually on the other side of the Mississippi. We welcome in Steve Merrill here, Drew Martin in the house, and of course, Adam Trigger here to break down a few of these games for you. Steve, talk to me, my man. What was your weekend like here? And uh, what, uh, if anything, have you been able to pull away from college hoops so far? Uh, pulled away a couple winners, Joe. Uh, 2 and 0, perfect 100% start. And of course, last year we started 25 and 7, 78% the first two months into mid January. So obviously I tread lightly, but when I strike, I strike hard. And nice start to basketball. 19 and 8 overall, by the way, 70% this year, NBA and college combined. I do have an NBA best bet for $9 Monday. So don't forget about the NBA. And of course, last chance to get a full month, 30 days of all sports for $199 with promo code Merrill199. Two R's, one L. M E R R I L 199 gets you 30 days of college and pro football, college and pro basketball for less than the price of one sport alone. 199 gets it done. Last chance, wagertalk.com. Man, nobody blows smoke like Steve Merrill. It's amazing. Outstanding there, Steve. Glad to hear it was a profitable weekend for you. And uh, it will continue to be. Steve's uh, crushed it in college hoops here, guys, at uh, Wager Talk over the last couple of years. So. Uh, now's a good time to hop on board if you're just transitioning into college basketball. Uh, Drew Martin also knows a thing about college hoops uh, or two. Uh, he, too, uh, one of the more profitable handicappers we have had uh, last year over at Sports Memo. Drew, this year you're at Wager Talk. Uh, and what do you got up for $9 Monday? How was the weekend? Sure, Joe. I mean, the weekend, uh, it, it was good. There was a uh, Tortuga mu Music Festival, a little country festival. I actually got out of the house for once with college basketball starting, college football, NFL going on. It's kind of tough for our sports betters out there. But overall, I mean, college basketball-wise, Joe, uh, it's been fun. And I, 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 it's not a sport that I go out firing right away. I take a week in, a couple games for these teams, and then I really try to light up the board. So that's what I'm starting to do this week in college basketball. In terms of $9 Monday, got some college football early week action, trying to get on the right side of some of these numbers. So check it out, Drew Martin, wagertalk.com. All right, let's do it here. And Trig, what's going on? There was a nasty rumor said you might've been wearing a Tom Brady jersey in, in Boston or something along those lines yesterday, man. But how was the weekend? What do you got going on at Wager Talk? Joe, weekend was good. I actually had a Massachusetts shirt on. Um, it was a, it was uh, it was good. I went to the Patriots game with Chris Thurston. Uh, we bet the Pats, and they won by by a ton. So that was fun. College hoop, pretty much even so far. Had I played two games this weekend. Temple came all the way back to get the money for me on Saturday against the number. Uh, they were plus six, and they ended up losing by five. And then yesterday, I had a, the dreaded underdog in overtime. You never want to see that. Actually, double overtime. Princeton went to double overtime uh, as a two, two-and-a-half-point dog and lost by seven. So always tough when that happens. But, you know, first week of the, the season, I'm not too worried about it. About even so far. I have a football – I have an NFL game up for $9 Monday. I may add – college basketball. I haven't, I haven't locked in a college basketball best bet yet, but there's a couple that I, that I have my eye on right now. Um, and one that we're going to talk about that I do like. So, uh, but yeah, it's, you know, I was on a, uh, I had a huge weekend last weekend. I, I was hot going into the week. So cooled off a little bit over the weekend, but hopefully that means we come out firing and get it right back to start this week. 
damn straight. Now burn that Patriots jersey. Good Lord. All right, guys, <laughs> let's start it up here uh, with uh, one of the classics every year, right? The Big East uh, taking on the Big Ten, and that's what we got going on right now is Providence going to take on Wisconsin. Wisconsin opens up as a seven-and-a-half-point favorite. I would imagine the crowd uh, going to be pro-Wisconsin here, taking on uh, the uh, Providence Friars, 132 as a uh, as a total for the open. And Steve, obviously, both a couple of cupcakes here for both of these teams, uh, both of these teams, uh, rather. So this is this is going to be a real test for both of these squads this early. What do you think we're going to see? Yeah, these are actually um, two teams I'm a little apprehensive with, and that's what kept me off this game tonight. Hey, look, Wisconsin over the years has been a real play on team for me in many situations. As you know, Joe, I love to use pace when handicapping college basketball. It's one of my big handicapping factors, one of the reasons I've done very well for decades in college hoops. I like to find slow-paced teams sometimes against teams that want to play faster. And obviously, for decades, Wisconsin's kind of been that prototypical type of slowdown half-court team. But this is not going to be a play on Wisconsin team for me this season. It's a real, real bit rebuilding season in Madison. Um, really could be a play against even despite their play, their slowdown style. Very little talent. Uh, they're playing with former role players, basically. The problem, though, for the in this game, what made it a pass for me overall, is that Providence also lost a lot, lost their best player. Um, a lot of unknown there. But I would still side towards the dog here if you're going to play this one. Um, totals only around 130. It should be a low scoring game. I think that also favors the underdog getting the five, five and a half here with Providence. So uh, Wisconsin, not a team I'm looking to back anytime soon. So uh Providence there, I believe uh Drew picks somewhere uh, sixth or seventh in the preseason for the Big East. It's an interesting matchup between these uh two, kind of a uh, a road game, but I always love the Big East Big Ten uh to start the season off. What do you think we're gonna get from these two? Yeah, this is a good one. I like that these conferences are doing this. I wish, I wish it would happen more in college basketball. Talking, Joe, about this particular matchup, I thought Steve you know, hit on a, a, an important point there. Pace and how it comes into the handicap, not only totals, but also sides. Who controls the pace actually has a lot to do with who wins the game. I always go towards the home team controlling pace but even more so a lot of times the more talented team and looking at this you know Steve brought up a good point in terms of how talented are is this Badgers team yes they're playing at home in the Cole Center would look for it to be a pretty you know wilder atmosphere for college basketball non-conference game and actually Wisconsin Joe has won 23 straight consecutive home games against non-Big Ten teams so they've really dominated here at home in terms of betting this game Look, I think Wisconsin running that slower pace is something we got to kind of factor in a bunch, but at just a 130 total, I would actually look to go over, mainly because Wisconsin has actually fouled a lot in the beginning of the season. And combine that with the fact Providence gets to the line a bunch, I think towards the end of each half here, we might actually get a bunch of stoppages and get to that free throw line, which speaks towards the over. So if you made me bet this game, it's of the three games we're talking, this is one I probably have the least feel for, but I would kind of lean here towards the over of 130 just due to the amount of fouls I'm projecting tonight. All right, good stuff there. We got, uh, it's interesting here, Trey. We got a Wisconsin team. It held its first two opponents, I think, to uh, just under 33% shooting. And uh, boy, oh boy, the turnovers, uh, they got a bunch of them in the first couple of games here. You think that translates uh, at least tonight in Providence and throughout the season? Yeah, I think it does. And, and I actually, I'm on the other side of that total. Uh, I, I think this is going to be a, a terrible basketball game. I, I actually think this is going to be really ugly. And I think the total, it's low. So Drew is right. If, if, if this gets into a free throw battle late, uh, that could absolutely push it over. But I actually see this one playing under. Uh, shout out to my friend Greg, uh, Providence graduate and sharp on Providence basketball. Him and I talk about Providence hoop on game day every, every game. And, and we both agree that this is going to be Providence running half court offense to Nate Watson uh, because they they're not going to be able to just run up and down the floor um, on, on Wisconsin the way they did against mm. Fairfield and Sacred Heart, two far inferior opponents that is who they played the first two games. So Providence is going to have to get in a half court, and they're going to have to get the ball in the Watts, and they're going to have to run longer sets. Wisconsin, they, this just isn't a good offensive team. They've got a freshman running the point uh, who looks like a freshman running the point right now. 
um, you know, turning the ball over. And I just don't see a ton of offense on this Wisconsin team. They only return one player that averaged double digits last year. That's Brad Davidson. And some of the guys that scored in the St. Francis and the Green Bay games, I mean, again, we're talking two far weaker opponents right there. So this won't be my best bet of the three. I'm not a huge totals guy, but what I see here is Providence is going to slow this game down more so than they did against inferior opponents. I think they're going to have to run half court sets, and I think Wisconsin's going to be fine playing that style. So low total, I think it's low for a reason. I think this is ugly. I'll say first one to 60 wins here. All right, good stuff there, guys. Get ready for it. These two teams have not played since 1996, so it's not uh, necessarily a matchup you see. Uh, all the time here. Three and one is what Wisconsin is against them all time. We are going to go ahead and uh, move to another very interesting matchup here as we take a look at uh, Illinois taking on Shaka Smart's new team. Huh? How about it? The Marquette Golden Eagles. Uh, this one opens up at his Illinois an eight and a half point favorite. The total open right around that 143 mark here. And uh, what do you think, Drew? What are we going to get, uh, Shaka Smart? New digs, new team, new players, uh, better results. What do you think we're going to see here? Yeah, it, it's a fascinating handicap, Joe. Uh, you bring it up. I mean, Shaka Smart, what are we getting here with Marquette? Um, I think we're going to get that pressure that he always brings. The quotes that I've read, it's, it's not going to change much style-wise. Of course, the players change in a good amount. Going up against Brad Underwood here in Illinois. And, Joe, if you're reading uh, a lot of these preseason clippings, you know, uh, Final Four National Championship caliber team here in Champaign, Illinois. Uh, Brad Underwood might be able to bring it this season. We'll really see tonight, you know, in terms of testing, uh, being tested. It really hasn't happened so far. So you'd like to look for that to happen here as they face the uh, Big E squad in Marquette. Look, uh, with Marquette pressuring under Shaka Smart, we kind of get that change at the coaching position. That's good for us sports betters, Joe, in terms of finding more winners than losers. And going up and down the court, in terms of betting this sidewise for Illinois, I think one of their weaknesses, or maybe not even a weakness, just a question mark coming into this season, is the younger guard play. And how will they handle this pressure for really the first time this season, talent-wise, going up against a like opponent? And Illinois, on the same side of things, they're only shooting 62 two percent from the free throw line i know it's short sample size here guys but the fact that they're going to get that pressure up against them and the market is telling us here the odds makers minus eight illinois that's the foul fest range so if it's a close game you know six seven eight points look out for that shaka smarts done it in the past in terms of starting the foul fest early and with them only shooting in the low 60s from the free throw line that's what actually kept me off this Illinois side. I was looking sidewise to be on Illinois, but because of that aspect, it kept me off of betting it sidewise. And actually, it makes me kind of look towards the over of 147 because I think Shaka Smart's going to go pedal to the metal here with a lot of pressure. So uh, it's not necessarily a high total, but at 147, I think there's enough talented scorers on both sides of the basketball. I would look to bet in this one over the total, Joe. Orange looking over there. And uh, Adam, I mean, Shock has got uh, uh, the Maryland transfer, I believe. Daryl Marcel uh, averaging about 24 points a game. The problem is the rest of Shock Smart's team is 8 of 41 from three point range. That's not going to get it done here against Illinois, is it? No, I don't think it is. Uh, I have a couple things here. First, I was on the record. I, can, I could not stand Shaka Smart at Texas. Uh, <laughs> I've never really loved him as a coach. He, he was fine at VCU, but once he got to Texas, he was always a fade for me. Um, I actually do think he'll have success at Marquette, though. I, I just have a feeling it's a step down. It's a slighter, slightly easier conference, but he definitely has a bit of a, a project here with this team. I don't have Marquette finishing very high in the Big East this year. I think it's a transition year. I think this will be some growing pains for Marquette. Illinois, Drew, Mar Drew Martin and I have a show on Wednesday nights called The Hustle on Wager Talk TV. And the only future I gave out uh, for college basketball was Illinois to win it all in the 20 to 25 to 1 range. So I'm really high on this Illinois team. And I agree with Drew. That was the way I was looking to go in this game. But a uh, couple things. One, Kofi Coburn still out. Three-game suspension. 
to start the season for selling his gear, which is ridiculous since, you know, <laughs> a day later, the NCAA decided it was okay to do that. But anyway, he's still out. This is game three of his three game suspension. Um, so I think people are, are looking at that and saying, well, Coburn out. So, you know, Marquette, but I think that's baked into the line here. And the guy that they have playing basically his spot right now, Coleman Hawkins has been great in the first two games. I mean, Illinois, yes, two inferior opponents, but they won their first two games by like 30 and 40. Uh, this team's absolutely loaded. So uh, I wanted to be on Illinois here. Uh, unfortunately, just a little bit too high at eight. I was hoping there'd be an overreaction to Coburn being out, and this one would be a little lower. Um, but, you know, Pfizer Forum is going to be sold out tonight. So mm. do with that what you will. Should be a good crowd. Uh you know, for, for the show, purposes of the show, I'll say Illinois minus eight because I really do think they're a far superior team to Marquette, but uh, too, too much, it's too much, um, you know, with, with a potentially Coburn and potentially one or two others out for Illinois and Marquette potentially feisty in front of a sold out crowd. It's, it's going to keep me off for making like a best bet, but Illinois minus eight for a, for a lean here for me. All right, Leo, there it is. And, Steve, i got to ask you, I mean, Illinois loaded. Obviously, depth, pretty important to them. Did a great job of recruiting. But they also have done a great job in the first two games uh, limiting uh, field goal. In fact, 33% from the field is what they've held their first two opponents. What do you think they do against Marquette here? Yeah, I think there's only one way you play this one, Joe, and that's Illinois or pass. Uh, line, as I agree with Adam, the line was a little bit higher than I'd hoped, but that's the only way I would look in this game. Um, Drew brings up a good point about the, the free throws because seven is kind of the magic number. You know, we talk about three and seven in football, critical numbers in betting. There's no key number in basketball, but there is some thought that seven is a little more key than others because that's kind of the turn it on, turn it off if you keep fouling approach. So eight and a half would mean it's a little bit out of that foul range, but Illinois shooting is a concern, 30% from three on the season, 63% from the line. Obviously, they have not been tested as double-digit favorites, uh, winning both of those covering one of them. But Marquette's uh, not a great team right now. They, they're they implementing that new pressure system. I just don't think he has his horses in place. And getting back to Adam's point about Shaka Smart, this is a guy I've watched over the years. When they were in the Colonial, I sat right behind the bench at several VCU William & Mary games and uh, watched him in person. Of course, his claim to fame was making the Final Four from the play-in spot as an 11 seed. That kind of catapulted him into that Texas job. Uh, one NIT title, three NCAA first-round bounces, 51-56 and 56 in Big 12 play. So I do think you can start making a case maybe he's a little bit overrated and is living on the fame from those VCU days in a mid-major conference. Uh, he's playing the big boys now. Illinois is the only way I would play this one. All right, looking at Illinois. We got an over and a couple leads towards uh, Illinois in that one. We've got one other game we're going to take a look at here. We're going to have out west for it, guys, and what a matchup this should be here. UC Santa Barbara taking on Washington State. Now, Washington State opened up as a uh, bit of a favorite here of uh, right around six, six and a half points there. Total 135. This will definitely be one of the degenerate specials uh, for us on the East Coast here. 11 p.m. tip. Drew loves these. And, uh, boy, what can you say here, uh, Trig, about the Guacha? I mean, they won the Big West tournament, right? They were, they were, were, They've won at least 21 games, I think, over, uh, over the last four years. This is a program that... Yeah, do they should they be uh, a six seven point opening dog here, or what do you think we're going to get from uh, UC Santa Barbara? So to answer the question, Santa Barbara's good, but yes, they should be this big of an underdog here because I, Washington State is awesome. Like I love this team, and unfortunately, I'm not. Uh, this is a fringe play for me here. You know, it opened six. I was actually surprised to see it move up to seven just because I thought Santa Barbara would draw some money. You know, they went to the NCAA tournament last year, uh, played that great game against Creighton where they probably, I mean, they had it and they kind of let it slip at the end. Um, so I, Santa Barbara is not really a team I want to bet against, but I'm like through the roof on this Washington State team. Talk about a coach I didn't like in Chaka Smart. Uh, <laughs> Kyle Smith, head coach, of, head coach of Washington State, is an awesome coach. He was basically responsible for turning the San Francisco program around and making them really competitive. This is his third year at Washington State, and I absolutely love what he's done in Pullman. 
Um, you know, he brings in, he brought in a couple of transfers that I think are going to really help this team offensively. So last year, Washington State really good defensively. Um, but outside of uh, Bonton, who was the, the guy that could really score for them, they really didn't have a ton of offense. Now he's gone, but collectively, this team's probably better offensively. Uh, Michael Flowers transfers from, from South Alabama can score. Um, but Tyrell Roberts, who sat last year, um, has really been the guy so far for them through two games. Unfortunately, the books figured this one out too because we're three games in. In all three games, I felt like I felt like they were forcing me to lay a premium with Washington State, and I think it's happening again here. Uh, I was hoping to get like the minus four, minus five range for Washington State, like to make it a best bet. At seven, seven and a half, it, it probably misses my my card for making it like a rated play. But man, I I think Washington State is is really good, and and, and you know I do res- I have respect for the Santa Barbara team. They're going to be a contender in the Big West again. They're always good. They're going to be good again this year. So not exactly a team I, I'm dying to lay points against, but uh, I I really like Washington State, and I have a my gut feeling says they win this one by by double digits. All right, there you go. He's high on Washington State. Uh, well, I'll tell you what, you like the coach there. I mean, Steve, Joe Passer, that coach at uh, UC Santa Barbara, has done an amazing job. This is his fifth year. He was the Big West uh, Coach of the Year last year. He's got a lot of returning players, really likes this squad here. But what do you think? Is it just, uh, you know, it's nice for the Big West, but it's a different story heading on the road uh, to Pullman to take on Washington State. Correct. And you can also make a case that, you know, they're not going to overlook a Big West opponent because they were a powerhouse that, as Adam said, was a 12 seed that was one point away from beating Creighton as a five seed in the tournament. They got everyone back. They are the best team. So I think Washington State brings their A game. They'll be focused here. Third straight home game, back to back wins. I think that's a good thing. Uh, a road trip to Idaho on deck. So really not too much of a look ahead. And uh, with two play on teams, I'd rather have the better team in this situation. So the line is a little inflated, but once again, Washington State, I think, wins this game. They most likely cover. Uh, something I'll point out about Santa Barbara, they like to play fast when they can. Washington State's looking to do a three-guard lineup, so I think they will push the tempo with them, and they probably have the better overall athletes. Santa Barbara had 119 points in their opening win. It was impressive, <laughs> 119 to 65 against Drew Martin, San Francisco State. Not San Francisco, San Francisco State. But they did have 20 turnovers in that game, which is a concern mm. for me. Um, 20 turnovers against San Francisco State is probably not going to bode well against a better Washington State team. Uh, so the Cougars are the way to play this. I know Adam's big on it. I believe he had that on Wager Talk today when we did the Pac-12 preview a few mm. weeks ago as his play on team in that conference. And uh, I would agree with him. These are two good teams, two possible play on teams. But the difference, everyone knows about UC Santa Barbara. It's kind of ironic that the Pac-12 team might be the under-the-radar team in this game. Yeah, it is. It actually, it, it is. And what do you think here, Drew? Uh, can I can I convince you that maybe, just maybe, the Gauchos are the way to go here, man? Take the points, or is Washington State just too loaded here to go against? Oh, you don't need to pull my arm too hard, Joe Ranieri. <laughs> it's the Gauchos tonight for me, and it sounds like I'm out on an island against Adam and Merrill. Two guys I don't like to go against. Uh, very respectable handicappers. They know what they're talking about. But Joe Ranieri, first off, I want to thank you. I want to thank Chris. I want to thank Dan behind the scenes for making this happen at 11 p.m. Eastern tip. Pac-12 yes. Network, Degenerate Special written all over it. We get the Big West winner from last season. Uh, you, you teed it up very nicely there, Joe. Um, in terms of, you know, we can't forget going last – Last year, they ended the season on that 18-1 and run, playing good basketball, a uh, well-coached team. Um, only lost in that, what, 12-5 seeding in the NCAA tournament by one point to Creighton last season. They return a lot. Um, they run their offense, you know, kind of a, a, a tough offense to kind of keep up with throughout the whole game. Mm. Now, I don't disagree with both Steve and Adam um, with the points of, you know, they're not going to be kind of sneaking up on anybody, sure. But I actually don't think the talent discrepancy is that large. Hey, I could be wrong. It's early in the season. You know, this is, uh, I guess, my best bet for tonight, you know, uh, the plus eight on the UC Santa Barbara, the Gauchos, that's the best bet. But uh, even the money line, a little sprinkle here, plus 230 on the money line. This is a Wazoo team that, yes, I, I, I think, you know, re- reading the the quotes, the press clippings, a talented team, but the shooting so far from the free throw line, 
under 70%, the two-point percentage, not really all that. So I think you see Santa Barbara here, well-coached team, on the road, ready to rock, coming off of that NCAA performance last season, plus the eight points. I'll take the Gauchos tonight in the Degenerate Special, Joe. I, I knew I could count on Drew to come in with the dog. I knew it. The Degenerate Special, 11 p.m. Eastern time tip, guys. Actually, it should. it's going to be a real good litmus test for both of these schools here. All right, guys, uh, time to uh, take a look at uh, the best bets here. It's not uh, the biggest of cards here tonight, but there are a bunch of intriguing matchups here. So, Steve, I'll come to you. And, again, I want to remind you guys that uh, it is $9 Monday at wagertalk.com, which means you can visit Steve, uh, Drew, and Adam. Head over to their pages at wagertalk.com right now, $9 Monday. Best bets across the board, 9 bucks here at wagertalk.com. And Steve, talk to me here. Of the games uh, on the card here tonight, is there one you might have circled you like a little bit more than the other? Well, I got another late night degenerate special for yes. 11 p.m. Eastern tonight on Monday. But before we get to that, just a reminder, as you said, $9 Monday, wagertalk.com. I've got NFL Monday Night Football Rams 49ers. More importantly, a strong NBA steamroller. 19 and 8, 70% start this basketball season. Still 100% in college hoops. 25 and 7 start the first two months in college hoops last year. Take advantage of promo code Merrill199. Two R's, one L. M E R R I L 199. Merrill199 gets you 30 days and nights of all sports, basketball and football, for less than the price of just one. 199 is normally 349. 249 for just football. You're getting it all for just 199. It's like getting basketball for free mm. with football. Merrill199, wagertalk.com. Steve Merrill, late night degenerate special, 11 o'clock Eastern. We're going to take a look at Long Beach State plus 26 and a half. This is more of a play against UCLA for me. We talked about it on the show Friday, UCLA Villanova, one of the bigger games of the season. Not only did UCLA win the game, but it went to overtime. And boy, do they have a big look ahead on deck. This is what we call a sandwich game. Coming off a big win with a huge game on deck. And I know the schedule says they play Bellarmine or however you pronounce it next Monday in Las Vegas. But more importantly, on Tuesday in Las Vegas, they play Gonzaga right after that. The team that bounced them in overtime in the Final Four last year. Biggest game of the season coming up. Huge look ahead. Coming off a big win. This is a flat spot. And Long Beach State is a capable team. Uh, Joel Murray, one of the best transfers from Division II, put up 28 points in his debut for Long Beach last week at Idaho. I think they can hang within this big number. Long Beach State plus 26 and a half goes at 11 p.m. Eastern Monday night. Just to uh, confirm, Steve Merrill is not the late-night degenerate special. His play is the late-night degenerate special. There's a difference there. I just want to make sure I'm People weren't confused there. Drew, talk to me here, they my were. man. Interesting opportunities here on the card tonight. So is there one you got circled you like? Sure. And, and speaking of Long Beach State, I know they're not at home, but one of the best home courts uh, in terms of that Ooh. beach, what they got whenever you're really going after it, degenerate style there, Steve. But uh, I like that play. <laughs> and uh, Joe, yeah, I guess just recap it real quick. The Gauchos, uh, Santa Barbara, plus eight against Washington State. Of course, going back to last year's team, making the run in the NCAA tournament, returning a lot, well coached here. And uh, the better free throw shooting team as well. So uh, give me the Gauchos plus the eight in the degenerate special, Joe. Yeah, tough spot. Uh, I, I, I love it. I, I cannot wait to watch that game here tonight, Drew. That's for sure. All right, uh, Trig, you got it, man. We know uh, outside of your absolute love for Washington State, is there uh, is that the game you're going to go with? You're going to uh, you're going to lay out as your best bet, or you got something else on top? No, I, I just decided to go rogue here for a second. You know, I I. What I want Washington State's my favorite of the three, but if if Drew is seeing eights right now, that that's just too many. That that's too many, and I I I I'd rather just stay out of it. I like I said, I would have been looking for to make a play on this at four or five. I think you could have got six for a few minutes. It was seven, seven and a half. If it's up to eight, that that's too many. Saints uh, Santa Barbara's a really good team, so so I'm gonna go uh, to a, a non-conference game. We're gonna go to uh, Missouri Kansas City against Missouri, Ooh. and I'm going to take UMKC plus 11 here. Uh, first off, the total in this game is in the mid-120s. So whenever you get a total in the mid-120s and you can catch 11 with a team in what should be a relatively ugly defensive game, uh, I always like to look for that. And and so that's a, certainly a, a, something that t typically favors the dog. Um, Missouri-Kansas City, I bet on this team the first night of the year, uh, beat the market by like three – Full points. They played Minnesota, and 
they ended up losing the, the, the game and they didn't cover Minnesota kind of pulled away in the end. Um, you know, I think they won like 71 56, uh, UMC, UMKC had to come out this weekend and play Iowa. Uh, and they, they didn't cover again, but that's a, just a terrible matchup for them. Uh, just, just, I was just a team that's, it's going to fire shots up and it's just not the, the type of team that Missouri, Kansas city is going to have se- uh, success against. Uh, they need to slow the game down. They're a defense first team. They need to make it ugly. And I think they can do that against Missouri. Uh, this is one of the worst teams in the SEC. Uh, I, I have Missouri finishing like bottom two or three in the SEC this team, uh, this season. And I, you know, they didn't overly impress me in their opener. I think they ended up winning by 10 against Central Michigan. Uh, I just don't have Missouri as a great team. And I think now I'm looking at this Missouri Kansas City team. They're a team I do like in their league. I think that they are a play on team for me in the Summit League. You know, they've had to step up in class and play a Big Ten team, um, two Big Ten teams so far, Minnesota and Iowa. And, and you know, Minnesota, uh, Missouri is a step up as well, but not quite as much. Uh, certainly not as quite as much as Iowa, and they're a team that can be slowed down by a good defense. So I'm going to look for a good defensive effort out of the Ruse here. Kangaroo is their mascot, one of the best mascots in Division I. Uh, I'll take the points. Give me UMKC plus 11 uh, for my best bet on the show today. Oh, stop. The Shocker is one of the best, man. It took me forever to figure out what the hell it was, too, man. I don't damn Bumblebee running around. It was all sorts of crazy <laughs> there. Yeah, yeah, don't have yeah. Ah, Drew, I love it. All right, guys, there is a game, by the way, on the board that I think the wrong team is favored tonight. I'm going with the Citadel getting three and a half against Presbyterian. Uh, If you guys caught the Citadel, they're getting three and a half points here. They also did a pretty good job uh, taking down Pittsburgh as a ten and a half point underdog, winning outright by 15. Um, The wrong team is favored here as far as I'm concerned. So I'll take the three and a half points gladly and also sprinkle a little something on the money line here with the citadel tonight all right guys there you got it once again a quick recap merrill is the dege- i mean he's going with the degenerate special long beach state 26 and a half uh, drew says you know what you see santa barbara man give me those eight points trig agrees with him somewhat but he's deciding to go umkc take the 11 i'm going with the citadel boy that is a dog paradise right there that is what i am talking about here people nine dollar monday by the way so make sure once again to head over to wagertalk.com steve merrill uh merrill uh, 199 also great opportunity for you guys to hop on for 30 days all access drew's best bets are locked and loaded nine bucks so are adam triggers over at wagertalk.com Appreciate the time, guys. Hit that bell in the upper right-hand corner. Make plans to come back and join us again tomorrow as the College Basketball Tip-Off Show. We are back. College Hoops is back, guys. Best of luck with your plays. We'll talk to you again tomorrow. The Wager Talk You Pick Special is live, giving you the option to pick the league of your choice and get 30 days of picks for only $99. 30 days of the NFL for $99, done. Just want NBA and NHL for the next month? You can do that for only $99 each. That's right, 99 gets you every lease from the league of your choice from your favorite handicapper, including 5% best bets for 30 days. No coupon code is required, and 30-day sports passes will go back to regular price Sunday at midnight. So lock in as many sports and handicappers for only $99 before time runs out.